Let's continue with electrodialysis. And in this specific case, we're going to be using two main concepts. First one, and the most obvious one, electricity. And the second one will be the dialysis concept, which we already saw a little bit in membranes, what was the overall concept of dialysis. We will be using a permeable membrane, which allows cation and anion flow uh, this is great and this is of interest because what we want to do is to selectively be able to move cations and anions according to their charge. This will prevent migration of species of similar charges. The main goal is to remove ions from solution. So I want to get this clear. So in some cases you could say that you want to recover certain ions, but the industrial application I see the most is solvent recovery you want to clean up the solvent and you want to remove all the ions so this is the likely approach we want to decrease the concentration of the solute in the solvent or we want to remove a solute completely or we want to maintain our focus in the solvent it involves the migration of ions through ion exchange membranes and please do not confuse with the ion exchanger even though it's a similar process, we are adding electricity to favor the ion movement. So remember the anode and the cathodes and the uh, negative and positive charges are going to be moving accordingly. The flux of an ion through the membrane is dependent upon its charge. The bulk concentration of the ion and its mass transport to the membrane surface will depend on that as well. In this way, species can be removed from reaction mixtures and away streams, thereby reducing the need for costly disposal and purification. And one thing we need to focus our attention is that this process is mostly for cleaning bulk chemicals. It is very convenient for us to first use electrodialysis and then other type of purification processes, because this you just need to apply a charge and you will be able to selectively remove the ions while other type of processes will require adding certain type of, of material, certain type of energy and so on, much more complex. So that's why electrodialysis is very powerful. Actually, it backs back to the early 1900s. The main goal was to add electrodes and direct current to increase the rate of dialysis. So that was the uh, straight uh, forward approach, you add electricity and the rate should increase. Now today we have much more sophisticated electrodialysis. We're typically going to refer to the cathode, to the anode, catholite, analyte, diluate and concentrate. Uh, actually, let's check, let, let's check them out. The cathode is going to have the negative sign, meaning that this is negatively charged. Ions flow or positive ions cations flow to the cathode and for anode this is the same but reverse in the symbol anode has a positive sign meaning that the negative ions or so-called anions are going to go and flow there now in the feed that you add in this part right here is going to be the catholite meaning that it's going to be rich in material of ions and the analyte as well in between, we have several type of materials. So this is a composite cell, but typically you will have only two of them. The diluate, which is the material which has been diluted or has been losing ions, and the concentrate, which is the original feed that must be removed or decreased in concentration. There can be many sections which are separated depending on the type of membranes. So this is an example electrodialysis, uh, ion selective membranes are of two types arranged in a alternating series pattern. So as here, remember this is one series, two, three, four, and five. So the important part right here is to understand that typically you're not going to see big uh, systems, you're going to see repeating systems. For instance, here we got seawater, uh, probably you're wondering already why do we use seawater? Because we want to clean the uh, seawater and remove all the ions, which are cations and anions. So here we go. We add the seawater in all these cells. 
we go the cathode and the anode and eventually what's happening here is that the ions start moving all the way to the left to the right and the concentration of ions decrease so we get these streams which are very low in ions and we get the concentrate which is the reverse so eventually you know that the material gotta end up the ions and cations and anions gonna end up in one stream and that's why we have the concentrate the cation selective membranes carry a negative charge we already discussed that and thus attracts and pass positively charged ions which are cations so that's why the name cathode whenever you have a doubt cathode will always attract cations and anodes will typically attract anions both types of membranes are impervious to water meaning that they are going to be able to uh, maintain the water in the stream the net result are that both anions and cations are going to be concentrated in the departments of the concentrated flows that will be number two and number four meaning that the diluates or the materials that are low in concentration of ions will be one three and five Compartment pressures are essentially equal through all the system and actually these operate at standard conditions typically Compartment 1 and 5 which is this one right here and this one right here Contain the anode and cathode so that's the one of the simplest arrangement is this one as follows that you have the anode the compartment You got the cells you got the concentrate 2 you got the diluate 3 concentrate 4 and diluate 5 now the addition of direct current voltage will cause that the electrons flow through all the cells and the well, from the cathode so it goes from here and goes to here uh, sorry reverse it starts from the negative point and end up in the positive point so remember negative to positive both electrodes are chemically neutral materials, meaning that in theory there should be no reaction whatsoever. Typically the anode will be a stainless steel, which is not that reactive. And the cathode should be a precious metal or some type of material that will not react. The platinum coated with tantalum, niobium or titanium will be a good material to start with. The electrodes are neither oxidized or reduced. Well, that's pretty straightforward. And well, this is what I wanted to show you on the overview of electrolysis. In the following lecture, I'm going to show you certain type of processes.